Hey guys, welcome back. It's Wait For It. The Fighting Nutritionist. <laughs> All right, so a lot of you requested a video on protein, more specifically on how to determine your needs, as well as protein timing before, during, and after training. Um, you know, so we're gonna cover some of those topics more in depth today. But before watching this video, please go back and watch my Back to the Basics video on protein, um, just to get a, you know, a basic understanding of some terminology and kind of get a foundation of protein metabolism, you know, and all the simplicities of proteins in general before we get into this video. So, you know, that watching that video before this one will help this video make a lot more sense. <laughs> So when it comes to protein, we need to understand that dietary protein is not a preferred energy source when it comes to exercise, meaning that you know dietary protein intake is not going to really influence exercise performance. Protein is mainly used to help build, restore, and repair muscle tissues, you know, unlike carbs and fats, which do supply energy to the body. All right, so obviously protein is important regardless of you know what sports you play, what activities you participate in. Um, you know, but in research, when it comes to protein, you know they do separate endurance athletes versus strength athletes. Just to put into perspective, again, that um, statement that I just made about how protein is not really an energy source that the body likes to use, you know, to create energy. Um, I just wanted to talk about some studies that I had looked up. So you know, a lot of studies, obviously, on protein have been done, and you know, specifically some on endurance athletes you know found that adding protein immediately prior to and during exercise you know did not improve endurance performance instead they found that protein intakes during this time helped suppress markers of muscle damage and inflammation um, and helped decrease feelings of um, fatigue and soreness so again just tying that back into how protein is not really an energy source and doesn't increase performance you know like an addition of carbs or fats may for exercise on the flip side of that in regards to resistance training and strength-based athletes the research seems to be a little bit more varied but overall high protein intakes do seem to have a positive effect on strength development and performance all right so how much protein should someone consume so the RDA or recommended dietary allowance recommends protein consumption to be at 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight to prevent any deficiencies and I'm gonna highlight that word again deficiencies um, so to put that into perspective let's take someone who weighs about hundred pounds uh, 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight would mean that they would only need to eat 36 grams of protein in a day. Um, clearly this isn't a lot. Most of you probably eat that in one meal. And you know, we're not here to just prevent defic deficiencies and sickness. You know, we, we're here to be healthy, we're here to build muscle, and we're here to perform. So what is really the recommended amount of protein to consume? So according to the International Society of Sports Nutrition um, that released a position paper all about protein, they recommend that in healthy individuals one should consume between 1.2 to 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Again, the lower end is recommended for more endurance-based athletes, while the higher end is recommended for more strength and power-based athletes. Um, you know, to build muscle and maintain muscle mass, an overall daily protein intake of about 1.4 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight is generally sufficient for most individuals. Again, however, if you're restricting calories, if you're trying to drop weight, especially fat mass, and you want to maintain muscle mass um, you know it is important to even increase that protein intake even higher um, probably closer to two grams per kilogram of body weight per day in order to preserve muscle mass you know while you're trying to drop fat and, um, and body weight so you know again a lot of research has been done on this and several studies have shown that increased protein intakes um, combined with the resistance training do lead to greater losses in fat mass um, you know with either maintenance or increases in muscle mass you know even in caloric deficits so this is why protein is king and we love protein so much um, and especially for my fighters this is why i place such an emphasis on high protein intakes during a weight cut all right so what about timing obviously you know most of you hear all the time that protein is the most beneficial to consume after a workout um, you know but do we really need to consume it immediately after exercise or with like you know within that hour um, no the answer is no not necessarily uh, since muscle protein synthesis rates peak within three hours after exercise and typically remain elevated for a long period of time um, however it's always better to get that in sooner rather than later you know especially if, if you have multiple training sessions in a day so again it's like what's the practicality of it if you can get it in right away go for it you know if you need to wait an hour or a couple hours you know that's okay too 
Consumption of protein before exercise can also be really beneficial as well. Uh, several studies have looked at this and found that protein consumption before exercise promotes a positive muscle protein balance and even activates pathways that are responsible for muscle growth. So pre-protein ingestion during exercise, um, before exercise can definitely confer some benefits as well and prevent any soreness later on. But you know, really overall, the importance of your protein timing is gonna depend largely on how often you're consuming protein throughout the day. You know, for example, if you have a really rich source of protein an hour before training, um, the need for your post workout protein shake or a meal with a large um, rich source of protein an hour after that workout isn't really going to be as crucial you know you probably can wait you know two to three hours um, you know but if you haven't eaten in like let's say five hours get a really intense workout in um, you know protein after that workout immediately after and within that one hour is definitely going to be a lot more important all right, so overall, when it comes to timing, um, the research supports that the most pragmatic approach for protein consumption is to consume at least 20 to 25 grams of protein every three to four hours to support muscle growth and promote a positive nitrogen balance. A positive nitrogen balance means that, you know, we are consuming more protein than we are breaking down. We're in a state of muscle protein synthesis. All great things for building muscle. All right, so let's recap everything because that was a lot of information. So overall, your total daily protein intake is going to be the most important. And for most of you, you guys are gonna wanna be consuming 1.4 to 2 grams per kilogram of your body weight per day. This number, again, might be higher depending on your size, age, activity levels, um, or again, if you're needing to initiate a calorie deficit and wanna maintain muscle mass, those, you know, those protein intakes may be a little bit higher. You know, the second point, consuming a rich source of protein of 20 to 25 grams every three to four hours seems to promote, you know, sustained increases in muscle protein synthesis. Third point, you know, importance of protein ingestion after exercise is gonna be largely dependent on when your last protein rich meal was. And last but not least, you know, making sure that you have a good quality protein. The quality of your protein is gonna be super important. So you wanna make sure that your protein contains all the essential amino acids and at least two to three grams of leucine. You know, that combination of essential amino acids and leucine does seem to promote the greatest rates of muscle protein synthesis. All right guys, so that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Um, again, this was a lot of information on protein, so make sure to go to back to my last video, back to the basics, um, again, to learn the terminology, maybe some basic metabolism. Next week, we're going to talk all about protein qualities, um, you know, sources of protein, which ones are the best, supplements, things like that. And then after that, we're going to bring on a guest, and we're going to talk all about veganism and plant proteins for athletes, you know, and how to get, you know, good sources of proteins in when you're a vegan or vegetarian as well. So make sure to follow me on Instagram at The Fight Nutritionist. Go visit my website, thefightnutritionist.com. Again, t-shirts are on sale, so go buy yours now. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, leave them below, DM me. I love to hear your feedback. See you next week.